What's going on everyone? This is Raheel and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be looking at my NeoVim config. You might be asking, Raheel, where, did you, where have you been for the last four weeks? And according to that intro sequence, you might have another question just being like, weren't you on Windows last time we saw you? Uh, yeah, that's because I am back on Mac OS. Um, all the good stuff there. And basically, the like I just moved over to the MacBook because the MacBook had more battery life and it was better for school. So I just went there. So yeah, let's get straight into those plugins. You're just like, well, Raheel, you already did a whole plugins video. Well, yeah, I'm sure that wasn't really all my plugins though. That was just the pl plugins that I, like, I really like to use a lot. Um, there are some other ones though. So let's just walk through my NeoVim config. Now, first let's start out with how the thing, how the whole NeoVim thing looks, okay? Uh, by the way, this little tab bar right here, some of you have been wondering, that's not Tima, that's not NeoVim, that's Tmux, right? I'll get more of that later. So. We start out with uh, the theme. The theme is going to be what the one dark theme, uh, just because I like how it looks. I used to roll with the default VS Code theme when I was using VS Code. Next one is going to be Neo Scroll, which I don't use. Uh, Neo Scroll is that thing where if you do Control D, Control U, down and up for um, Vim and Neo Vim, uh, that just makes it so it scrolls smoothly up and down. Right now I have it deactivated because I don't use it because I don't really care. So. Um, I'm also going to be updating this while I walk you through this because I don't use a lot of these plugins anymore. So, you know, it's good to know. Um, Vim Prettier, Prettier is for, that's just a prettier plugin that is using in VS Code. Um, and it's great for indenting HTML. That's the only thing I use it for, but a lot of the time it doesn't work either. So I'm not sure why I have that still. Uh, indent line, I forget what that does. The buffer line is going to be at the very top. That's that little tab bar you see. There's also bar bar, I believe. I can't, if that's what it's called. It looks very, very similar. Um, this X button here, here does nothing because I can't really click in the Alacrity terminal. So um, that's basically that. I don't really have too much configuration for bar for line. I'm okay with the regular configuration. To enable icons, I think it just auto detects icons. So that works out. Uh, Vim transparent, you don't actually need this plugin. This is just to make the background of the, um, the Vim environment the same as the Alacrity terminal. Um, that's the one I'm using, by the way. But basically, the uh, one dark plugin comes with a lighter background than I like, right? That means lower contrast, right? So I wanted more contrast in the text, and the default background that came with Alacrity works well. So I'll just do that way. And Vim Colorizer is one I don't use. That's basically one that highlights um, when you are using hex codes um, in any file, then it just has a little background color to it, saying this is the color that this hex code represents, but I don't use it because I don't really care. Uh, markdown preview is amazing for just using like previewing markdown but you'll see why i'm deleting this in one second first one is gonna be lazy git plugin i've already put that in my plugins video the lazy git plugin is just a plugin that spawns a lazy git window in the middle of your like neovim terminal so if i just do uh, the lazy git command shortcut this is all of lazy git right um and it is like it's just a small like terminal user interface inside of a terminal user interface if that's what you can call it but yeah, that's all it does, and it's very easy to use. You don't have to go outside your terminal or use Vimix, for example, which I'll get more into. Vim surround, uh, pretty obvious. You just have to, if you want to surround a bunch of text with a character or a few characters, it's very easy to do. So, for example, if I want to surround this word called plug uh, with something, or actually, let's go to my Python. That's probably a bit more useful. If I want to turn this zero into a um, string, then I just do why surround word and it asks me which character and I just do quotes and there you go it surrounds this word with quotes and you can do why like lines as well so yss and then quotes right and then different different like all the same um, text objects that you have in NeoVim or vim, vim you can use with this plugin which is really awesome tpop is kind of awesome as well vim obsession is one I don't use uh, that's basically saving your sessions um, and like good it's great for respawning them in the case they disappear but I don't really care so um, Vim Startify is also one I don't use because I don't, Vim Startify is when you just click, um, like when, when you just say NVim, right? And then it just has to show something. So I don't ever just say NVim I, or like NeoVim. I always just NeoVim into a file like it's doing right now. Um, by the way, if you guys don't know which plugin um, source I'm using, I'm using Vim Plug, uh, which is just this plugin manager that's like Bundle or um, the other ones. I can't remember the names of. Uh, it's just basic, very basic, easy to get started, and compatible with NeoVim, so I just use that. I, there's no actual other reason why I use it. It's just the first one that came to me and the most compatible with other plugins. So you can use whatever you want, though. Vim Sensible I also don't use uh, because I have all my like uh, my configurations set up manually, but this is really great. Um, like I'll show you later, 
for avoiding a lot of that same setup. And especially if you just want to start with one plugin and then um, use that as a baseline, Vim Sensible is an amazing thing. Auto pairs is basically just when you do a bracket, it does a closing bracket. That's all that does, right? Or you can do close quotes or whatever, right? Depending on the language. Um, it does, doesn't do the same thing for HTML tags though. You'd either need Alta snips um, for LSP uh, or I'm sorry, language server protocol, or you can use a different thing like a close vim close tag, which is down right down here. It just closes the tag for you. So div, this is, we're not in HTML files, so that doesn't work. But you know, it would just close it. It would just do an automatic closing tag. What else do we have? Emmet vim. I also don't use that. I can just copy and paste from the internet. But no, Emmet vim is just a bit more useful if you want to automatically use an Emmet snippet at the top of an HTML file. It's really nice to use. Tag along. I completely forget what that does. I'll just leave it there because I feel like it's important. Use the tags or something. Uh, vim autosave. I already talked about this plugin in my plugin video. Um, just saves your file automatically, which I really like. Vim close tag. That's the one I just said. Vim commentary. Oh yeah, it's that's commenting things. So you can just do. Uh, you can use regular text objects, but I usually just comment one line at a time. So that's um, GCC, right? So GC is just going to be the comment, and then you do C again, and that's just the line, right? Basic Vim lines um, things, but you can also do GC and then the whole bracket, whatever you want to do. Very easy for commenting, very easy for uncommenting, so that's nice. Vim highlight let yank is just uh, when you yank a word. So if I just do YW yanks a word, it just highlights that word. Um, I could have implemented it myself, but I don't really want to, so that's good that exists. Vimix, that is one that I've already said in my plugin video as well. It basically just plugs, it just spawns a um, Vimix uh, split pane right below. It's 20, I think it's 20%. Um, of the screen with so that's nice basically you can just spawn a shell so I can just run a command It's like Python 3 and then Whatever I don't know this, this file doesn't exist, but you know I think I think it's just a problem because I have multiple Splits open it just spawns a split underneath check them out the plugin video if you want to see that one And then we go right back up to LSP. You're gonna need some Lua configuration for this one uh, So you want to check out some other videos if you want to get started using the language server protocol, but uh, in the essence, you just need these three plugins. So the third one is for Python only. Um, so the first one is necessary if you want to enable LSP or language server protocol inside of NeoVim. That's going to give you your completion. The completion can only be enabled if you have the completion plugin. Uh, the completion plugin will only uh, complete syntax for known languages. So if you don't um, put in the languages specifically or install those uh, language server protocols specifically, um, or you're missing some snippets like HTML snippets, then Alta Snips has you covered. That's the snippets part down here. So Alta Snips is the one that, like a clever, clever commenter, um, pointed out. That's the one that's actually going to be generating your autocomplete suggestions. So all three of these or five of these work um, together, which is nice. Tree Sitter is just uh, it's just an advanced syntax highlighter, I believe. Uh, it's really good for uh, that's what I use it for. But there's I think it does a few more things, but I don't really know what they are. Uh, other so we have Vim dev icons. That's going to be those, that icon you see at the top. Um, there's another one called and Vim web dev icons. I don't really know what the difference is between these two. This must be being used for something else. I think this one's for like telescope, um, which is the plugin that I'll get to, which is right down here. And then the other one is for the uh, the tab bar. Git gutter. I've already showed off in my other plugins video. It just shows what the changes are. But like I said, if you install the lazy Git plugin, you don't even have to like do that. It just shows it anyway. Uh, Vim sneak is the one I don't use anymore, so I'll be deleting that. But basically, it just allows you to, it's like a relative line number, except very precise. So usually, if you want to use relative line, you want to say, I want to go five up, right? You just do 5K, right? And that goes f five lines up. So now, if you want to go to like a specific area of that line, and you want to go to a specific word, let's say, say I want to go to the fifth a ABS, like or absolute value part of this Python code. There's like two of them in front of them. So I want to know which one. So I click S for my sneak shortcut. And I want to go to AB. So there's two of them. It automatically goes to the first one. But if I want to go to the second one, I just click on semicolon because that's the character that's highlighted it. And it works. Uh, for example, if I want to get into, or another example, if I wanted to get to like this very first height, uh, if I click capital S, which is backwards, um, or up sneak, and I just do HE, and it highlights all of these heights ones. So I want to get to N. Right, because that is where it is. So you just like you just look at it and it just goes there. It's pretty nice, but I don't use it. Cody, I also don't use. That's basically um, it's like a real time Python compiler and tells you what your kind of code is going to do. But it's not great for infinite loops, so not not doing that. Now, of course, nothing is great for infinite loops. Don't do that. 
Telescope, that is the one I've also shown in my plugin video. Please do check out my plugin video first, guys, if you haven't checked it out, because it's pretty nice. Um, the pop-up plugin is does something. The planary plugin does something. Telescope plugin is the telescope plugin. That's all I can say about this one. I actually don't know what these plugins do. But you can check those out for yourselves if you want to. The telescope has a whole bunch of cool configurations that are automatically applied once you install those plugins. Um, so telescope, if you wanted to see a quick demonstration, if I wanted to find a file, right? These are all the files, right? Of course, this is literally my whole computer, so I don't want to blow it up, but you can use a, it's just a fuzzy finder, right? Uh, you can do the same thing with FZF, you can even spawn a shell in the middle, but it doesn't, I don't think it gives you previews, or you could enable them in a different plugin, but I don't really want to, so. I'm a very la lazy person, that's why I, I'm a programmer, I guess. Vim Airline is completely useless for me, I actually don't use Airline, um, I just look at it because it looks pretty, that's the only reason I use it. I actually don't pay attention to like no, when it changes into insert mode or um, visual mode, like any of us use visual mode. So that's like, I don't really pay attention to it. None, none of this information is inherently useful for my work. It's just there to keep it pretty because I don't really like when the whole thing shifted down too much. So what else do we have? The file explorer, um, that's just gonna be your tree um, or your file tree that is usually in VS code. So if you want to like open up your file explorer, then if you want to open up your file explorer, you'd be able to do that. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate because mine's not working, so. Those are all your plugins, right? A lot of those are gonna have more deeper explanation when you go and when you, if you check out my plugin tutorial video, uh, which is somewhere up here, that one will explain a lot be better of what these plugins do. Onto the remaps. These are all my remaps and I don't wanna explain them. Basically, um, they're, they're just they're just like apparent to me. And of course, I guess like if I deleted some of these, then um, I gotta delete sneak. So I'll delete all those sneak ones, right? And these are just um, buffer movements. So if I have like a, bol a multiple buffers or multiple tabs at the top, and I want to move through those buffers, then these are just the shortcuts that I use. And right? so leader key and D and P. For those who didn't see, my leader key is actually um, that's at the bottom. The top is it says the map leader is comma. But a lot of people like to set it to black backsplash or like forward slash or something. So do what you'd like. I think the default is backslash, but I would have to double check. Backslash didn't actually work for me until I remapped it. So basically for these ones, these are just going to be like a uh, quick, uh, quick, like personal keyboard rem remapping. So you definitely don't have to follow these. Um, these one, this one just means insert mode, no remap, um, like just remapping JK to escape. So that just means when I'm in insert mode and I want to exit insert mode, uh, escape won't work, it'll be JK instead. JK just means I don't have to use my pinky to go all the way to the escape key because I don't like that. Actually, I'm not sure what this one does right here, so it doesn't look like it does anything. I'll leave it be for now though. This map one, uh, th this ordinary map basically removes any highlighting I used to have. So let's say I highlighted all every instance of escape, right? Now all of those are highlighted when I'm trying to search for it. Right? And they don't go away even when I go into insert mode. So to um, say no highlight, that's just the NOH command, so no highlight. It's just been remapped to escape, so when I click escape, it's all gone. Uh, this one right here will say exactly what the comment says. So it will search, will, when, when you search something, it'll center on the line it's found in. So if we do that same escape thing, right, and I go, then it just centers it in the middle of the screen, so it's nice and easy to see. You know, sort of like a, the find uh, feature in most web browsers. Telescope, these are just telescope leader commands, right? They, like, of course, you can do live grep and buffers or whatever. I don't really use live grep either, and I don't really use help tags or so. I guess I gotta start using those. Lazy gits, that's just the uh, leader LG command. The Vimix, that's the run, there's a, there's just three I use. Um, run, run a command, the run the last command, and close the runner, so pretty simple. Although you can close the runner yourself just by going to the pane and then, you know, deleting the runner. These are for my plug, uh, these are for, this is for like the Vim plug, plugin manager. So let's say if I want to um, clean up those plugins that I did not want anymore. So that would just be PI, although it looks like it's not correctly remapped. So let's do leader PC. No, look, see, I actually have a, I have a remap for the source command. So leader S and it'll source all that. That's very nice. And now let's do a run that plug clean and now I'll show all those plugins that I don't like. Let's remove all those directories and they're all gone. I love it. Um, these are just my buffer ones. Like I said, for some reason, the sneak one didn't delete. I guess I undid that somewhere. Alrighty. And now this is just a uh, preference opening help vertically instead of horizontally. And then these are all of the actual configurations. A lot of these are going to be in that, uh, Vim, like that, that basic Vim plugin that you got Vim sensible, I believe. And that will just be, show you like turn on syntax and it'll have, 
a cursor line enabled, I believe, and then it'll have some default uh, tab widths as well. Of course, turning spaces to tabs is one thing that you might want to do or, or not, whatever you want to do, you can do that. Um, these are all just terminal configurations as well. So for example, showing the color of the terminal that I have. So when I switch from iTerm2 to Alacrity, then Alacrity has a different color configuration. It supports a bit more for some reason. So that's what I changed it to. Of course, you can copy down all of these if you'd like. And if you ever have any questions, you can just use help or just the H command and then use the help for like, let's say swap file. That's that, like that's that actual um, setting. Okay. These are just plugin configurations, as the comment likes to say. The autosave is set to one. Sneak label is set to one. That's the one that basically allows Sneak to actually label items, right? Um, so that's one thing if you want to do that. Of course, that's uh, not going to be applicable here anymore. So let's delete that. A prettier. So yeah, quick fix is enabled. So I guess not. I'm not sure what that does, but I'm sure it does something. You can enable auto format for prettier as well. So anytime you save, it just automatically formats it, but it keeps ruining my code. So I don't want it to do that. The color scheme, this is the one that I was telling you about, uh, the is like terminal specific ones. To enable the color schemes in like installed by plugins or installed externally, you want to just set color scheme equal to the actual name of the color scheme. Sorry if I don't use anymore, but that's just a bunch of configuration there. Airline, the theme is one dark, and that's also powered by airline themes, the plugin you saw above. Of course, power line fonts is going to be the one that I want to use as the icons, right? Because the icons don't come in by default. So I want to set those to one. Tab line is also an airline extension. So airline, tab line, they work together. The tab line, I don't really like because it doesn't like look as prettier. So, you know, I guess not. I will delete all of these configurations then. Auto completion, I wanted to set to Alta snips. So that's going to be the snippets that I showed before. Of course, you can use those in most uh, in files like Markdown and uh, HTML. It's very useful there. And then this is where we start on Lua. This is where the LSP configuration comes in. So I will, I said it, I the first start by saying an unattached Vim function, basically just saying this one thing. I want all of these, um, what is it, LSP plugins to use completion and or any of the ones that I set to use completion anyway, right? But every time I want to do that, I have to copy and paste this same line inside of the like setup file, just like this one, right? So require LSP config dot pi LSP. That's a LSP plugin dot setup. And we want to use completion with that. You put on attach equals on attach underscore vim, right? And that'll work. But usually you have to like just copy and paste that line and put it instead of what you, we have here. So this just helps clean up the things a little bit more and makes everything look a little less messy. This one is for setting up HTML uh, snippet support because you require this for HTML for some reason. I wish they made it a little bit more simpler, but you know, I guess that it is what it is. Same thing with CSS. Um, and I think that also works with SCSS. So we can try that out there. For JS, I actually don't use it, so it's not. YAML is one thing that you might want to install. And all of these have to be installed uh, separately, by the way. So you have to like use um, you call it NPM or PIP, depending on the actual packages you want to install. And you might want to install them globally so you don't have to keep reinstalling them every directory you go into. Buffer line, that's going to be the one at the top. Tree sitter is the one that's going to be highlighting. Um, and you can set which syntaxes it highlights for. For example, tree sitter does not like SCSS for me for some reason. So I, del I basically disable it for that one uh, manually instead of putting it here, but you can do the same thing. So that right there is the Vim configuration. If you want to see more examples on, like most of it is plugins, of course, if you want to see more examples on those plugins, like I mentioned, go to that Vim plugin video that I showed somewhere at the top and you will get a good on, good on explanation of what the plugins look like. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Be sure to uh, hit subscribe as well as drop a like on this video so I know you guys enjoy the content. If you want, if you want to keep up to date on times that I'm not completely posting or if you have any questions, please follow me on Twitter or leave a comment like I mentioned. I'll be happy to reach out. I'll be having another one of those polls, by the way, for what type of video you might want to see next. So stick around. I'll see you in the next video.